you keep a journal of some form as a list of things that will need to be addressed before trust will be rebuilt. So when you look at the intimacy pyramid, we first have to get good at the basic level of daily interactions where things are warm. We just have to be good roommates. Okay, we're not trying to be intimate roommates, psychologically, emotionally, or physically. We're just getting good at being good roommates. Then we're going to be checking to see if we even have common goals. We're in the cognitive intimacy stage now. Is Even if we do fix all of our problems, are we even going to the same destination? Two people can get along really well in their pioneer wagons, but if one of them is seriously planning to go to Texas, the other one's planning to go to Oregon, you can't fix all the problems because you're going to be going separate ways. Before you commit to and trust the person, emotional intimacy, which we're preparing for now, is walking through every one of those things that's on your list. Emotional intimacy is the ability to, one at a time, review dysfunctional things from the past, making sure we have the ability to talk about everything. I expect the men to initiate these conversations, not you. You know he's not ready for the next layer of intimacy when he doesn't bring up, I might have gone past everything from the past, I might, might have moved on, but you are a human, breathing, living female, and you need to have these things addressed, and I respect that. So here's my list of things that I remember we have that's unresolved. So let's talk about the ones I remember and then I'm going to ask you before I try to move our relationship to an even more complex level of intimacy what else do you have? You have experienced so far the sensation of we never talk about it. But because of the way the intimacy pyramid is built and physical intimacy is after emotional, after psychological and after spiritual intimacy there will always be missing pieces primarily for him that he would love to have. He's not used to having to do this much emotional intimacy intimacy in order to get to physical intimacy. And some scientists or people imply, well, hey wife, you have to participate in some physical intimacy in order to motivate him to do this. No, 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 no. Would you ever teach that to your daughters who are pre-married? Sweetie, you're going to have to give him more physical intimacy in order for him to be motivated to do the psychological part of premarital relationship development. No way would you teach your daughters that. So why should that be true in a marriage? Well, now you're manipulating. Now you're doing this. No, you're building a pyramid in a healthy way. Okay, so this might just be where we're at in our relationship. But that, not talking about it, never coming back to it. That's an unhealthy cycle that we have to work really hard to stay out of because I used to be the, the shut down. I would be the one that would be like, I would stonewall. But my husband was more of a pursuer, like, don't walk away. We got to finish this. So then what would happen was if I felt like I couldn't walk away, then I erupt and then nothing productive happens and it's just more damage to repair later. So we had to have a conversation or two outside of any sort of heated conversation where we agreed that if there is a difficult conversation that's coming up that if one of us needs a time out that we give each other permission to take that relational time out for a minute with the promise to return what we do now is when one of us needs to take a relational time out then we'll say something like i'm in a better place i'm ready to revisit that when you are and that works for us because then it's not like saying we're never we're gonna ignore it now now we're never gonna get back to it and then i have to work really hard not to go to stonewalling because that's sometimes what i want to do that's after a lot of work because creating these codes for each other it's kind of like professional athletes that we can't we don't have time to have a full conversation about this we have to talk about it at practice and then I'll give you a code phrase they do some football all the time where they it's called calling an audible and they just change the play based on a signal that they make but everybody knows what it is because it's already been planned so what Hallie's describing is some code based communication that was created before that can only be done in the verbal intimacy and the cognitive intimacy phases when the conversation goes wrong not if the conversation goes wrong. I'm going to do this. What are you going to do to signal me when you need to retreat from the conversation? Because if you force it, then it will just crash and burn. Now, some of the men still don't understand because we haven't trained them yet on the emotional intimacy. In other words, the necessity to talk about all things from the past. Some of them are really hoping, including me, my masculine instinct is, can we never, please never talk about that again? Because it's so painful for me to talk about what I did wrong again. But I know the science of it and I know that it's necessary. But they may not know that yet. So just keep a list of things that will need to be addressed. Think of it like the airplane. I am not going to get on this airplane until all these things are addressed. I'm going to stay in roommate mode or girlfriend mode, but not wife mode based on how safe it is. So I can be sweet. I can be kind. I can be generous. I can be gracious because I'm a woman, not because I'm your wife. I just am, I am a good woman whether I'm married to you or not. I am, love being a wife when I'm in a relationship with a husband, not a guy roommate.